All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Uh, check this out. Today, we're going to look at the flow path again, and we're going to correct a couple of things that um, kind of go wrong with it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to assume that you have watched one of the other flow path tutorials and sort of know about the problem when the um, text sort of meets the edge of that loop um, or of that, uh, that circle, uh, its flow path. So anyway, check this out. What I'm doing is getting, um, you know, the, the text curved along this circle and being able to do a nice 360 degree loop and have it just sort of maintain its shape and, and do all of that. Now, in the other tutorials, you would have noticed that, you know, somewhere near the end of where this, uh, where this um, text hits there, um, you know, it would get all deformed. And that was because basically the text is bumping into the end of that curve. And, um, you know, when we assign it to a, a motion path and a flow path, it sort of wants to pick up those properties. So I'm going to show you a method here. Um, this was sort of brought up by a, a subscriber and someone else who watched the video and um, the other tutorials and sort of we, we looked at this problem a little closer. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and set this up. We'll, we'll do a full scene and just sort of walk you through this process of getting this perfect. So. Um, if you need a perfect loop of text going around, let's get started and, and do this. Now you can see in this I have a light here and a light here. I just have one um, NURBS circle right here and a plane down here. And essentially uh, it looks something like this. If I do a render, uh, looks kind of like that. Well, it's a bad lighting angle because I set this up for, I believe, the left side. So. If I uh, were to do a loop there and have it in place, let's see what deep fried ectoplasm actually looks like. Okay, so you can see there. You may want to have your text rotating around perfectly and be able to see it all the time and not have any kind of abnormalities in it. So um, let's fix that flow path problem right now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close out of my render view, render view right here. And uh, let's just create a new, let's just do a new scene. And I don't need to save that. We'll just start from scratch. So first, let's just create really quickly a NURBS uh, circle. All right. And I'm just going to go there and pull that out. And let's, uh, you know, when we're dealing with this stuff, let's just keep everything centered. So I'll go ahead and uh, click on that. And let's center that out to like zero. Okay. Now. Let's go ahead and create some text, just simple text, or you can be working with, like, say, an Illustrator file of a logo or something. You can use an object with this as well. So I'm just going to go down here and create some text. And in this case, it's my default. We'll just go with a deep fried ectoplasm. There it is, and there it is. So now we have a, a circle and we have our, our text. So that's cool. What I want to do now is just select the text, go ahead and then select the uh, curve. And I want to come up here and make sure you're in your, um, uh, let's see, we're going to be in our animation menu set. And we're going to animate this. But first, we're going to attach it to a motion path. And right away, you can see where it switches and attaches itself to the motion path. And this is the beginning of the problem with the other tutorials about using a motion path is because this is where the starting point is for this object. And so that's what sort of is causing problems. When it comes all the way around, it wants to kind of skew outside of that. So first, let's just deselect everything and take a look at this. We'll go ahead and select the text again and then select your curve. And we're going to animate this now. And we are going to attach it to the flow path. We're going to do the flow path. Now, right away, you see where it, it looks weird, and, and that's kind of the way it should be at the moment, but let's fix that first. Let's go right away to the outliner, and let's select that base node, and you might even want to drop this down and shift click and make sure that you have both those selected, and let's just go to our scale tool and scale this thing up until it gets to the point where everything fits within that, uh, that lattice, all right? And I might want to bring that out just a little bit. Okay, so there you go. Now it's sized in and it's ready to go. But you'll notice that we set our, we were only set at 24 frames down here. So if I play that, it's going to whip around there really fast. All right. So let's do this. Let's, let's do an edit. Let's just do an undo. Let's do another undo. Let's do another undo. 
Yeah, we'll get it straight here real quick. <laughs> uh, we'll do an undo. I'm going to kind of go back here into the beginning and uh, let's just see if we can get back to ground zero. All right, so now we're at ground zero. So let's take a look at this flow path first. We want to make sure that this has its numbers set up to like say 400 frames because that's going to indicate how long this flow path is going to be. Now we can go ahead and select our text. Now we can select this curve and come up into animate and attach it back to that motion path. Well, now it has 400 frames to go around, so you'll see we have a lot better, smoother action with the, the flow there. All right, so let's go ahead and select our text, and we'll go ahead and select the, uh, the circle, and let's come down here, and we're going to, um, let's see, we're going to animate, we're going to go to motion paths and flow path object. And there we go. So right away, you have to go back to the outliner, and you want to be able to size this base up. And so I'm going to click there. I'm going to get my shape. And I want to basically bring this up. Now we're back to square one. And we're going to see what that looks like. OK, so now you can see we have text rolling through here. And that's cool. So let's just say we stop it right there. And we come around here, and we take a look at it. And we can see that it's curved, and it's going around in its uh, normal path. And let's see what happens when it comes around here. Well, you'll notice that as it gets toward the end, the, the end of this starts buttoning out and sort of doing that kind of thing until it finds its original resting point when we started. So that's OK for now. Um, let's just go ahead and hit pause. And let's take a look at that. There's my text. There's everything else. Now, at this point, an easy thing to do is just go ahead and select your text. And let's, do a, uh, let's duplicate that. So just go to Edit and just do a duplicate. And then let's move it out of the way. Like, let's say, let's just get rid of it in here or back there somewhere for the moment. And let's come over to the outliner and take a look. What I want to do is select everything that I just did, basically. But I don't want to select the, the circle. I want to basically select the lattice. And I want to select this base and you know maybe the base shape and get all that in there. And then hit Delete. OK. Um, now, we could also click on the old text on this first surface and hit delete as well. All right. So now we're, we're good to go. But you'll notice that you know I have this back here, and it's not attached to this as a motion path. So what I might want to do is um, bring this forward back into the position of kind of where it was at. Let's go ahead and select the curve. And let's come to Animate. And let's reattach that to a flow path, or I mean, um, to the motion path. All right. So I'm going to reattach that. And now, as you can see, no matter what, it's going to keep its shape. I'll set it back to the beginning. We'll watch it go around here. And technically, that should solve the problem of, um, you know, having to go all wacky here when it uh, passes through. So. There you go. <laughs> OK, so now we're kind of, you know, in the ballpark of what we want to do. I mean, we have a nice, nice rotation. Uh, there's no problems going on with the edges over here. And now you can kind of size this out and do various other things with it, uh, just depending on what you want to do with um, with your flow path. But, you know, that's sort of a, a quick and simple way to solve this problem. And, uh, you know, it, it's <laughs> It, it's sort of like one of those things where you need to have curved text sometime. And sometimes you just need it to be static. So if you just needed it to be static, well, then you would just uh, delete your uh, flow path. And uh, you'd have uh, have your text right there. So, And then you know, there's other ways. If you want to um, you know, apply this to the side of something, like say you wanted to create a, uh, like a cylindrical object or something like that, well, you could just sort of come out here and you know bring up a cylinder, and uh, it's kind of big. <laughs> Let's scale it down a little bit. Uh, maybe bring it down space a little bit there, and bring it uh, forward. You may have to go into a four view or something like that and try and uh, sort of you know center stuff out, sort of get things get things where they should be. 
but essentially that's the idea. Um, let's go for a top view here and see what's happening. All right. And we may want to just scale that up at some point. And there's ways to, you know, parent these together and to do all sorts of other stuff. Uh, you can select your text and now you can maybe like, you, well, yes, yeah, so you have to be kind of careful with what you do with, um, you know, sizing your text uh, with the, the scale tool. So, you know, in that case, uh, it really messed it up. So I'm going to hit undo. But in this case, I might want to, you know, click on my scale tool here and maybe scale everything up, you know, accordingly that way and then, you know, readjust the other parts. So, you know, but even then you'll notice that, that when you start messing with it, it's going to mess with the flow path. So uh, everything is sort of um, variable on that. And, you know, you can, you know, let's see, we can go back here and, and maybe... Uh, Maybe undo a couple of those, and okay, now everything's flipped around. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, uh, you get the idea. Um, you're going to be parenting this this to the flow path. There it goes. It's back in. All right, so. You can make something flow around, you can freeze it in space, you can attach it to another object, combine the mesh, make this thing move around, you know, whatever you need to do. So just play around with it. That's the concept, and uh, it's a really useful concept, and it's probably, you know, a good way to go. Now, um, another um, commenter on, on one of the other flow path um, videos said something about, you know, you leaving an open-ended curve here and using a spiral script to sort of have it move around through there. But, you know, in this case, this is a basic easy way to do it on a kind of an elementary level. And I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but that was the solution of the day. <laughs> okay, well, hey, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And as always, uh, read a book, uh, learn something, and... Um, yeah, be a great person, all right? Cool. Later.